Wait, there's something very weak coming through. There's only one thing I want from Finn in this movie. Okay. And it's to okay. have a stunning bromance with Poe. <laughs> <laughs> they had the whole buddy cop thing going on for like five minutes yeah. of The Force Awakens. And I'm like, they could have like a whole series together. They're, they're, <laughs> their their chemistry is awesome. I want more of the two of them yeah. together. And that's all I want. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Hello fellow Galactic listeners, I'm Aaron Hulian, and this is WSTR, Galactic Public Access, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 5050. I didn't think we'd make it this far. But we did. But we're here. We did. We did. We did. We're here. We are ready to go. All set days, hours before The Last Jedi. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Yours and ours, Last Jedi Predictions. Joining me today is the legendary Mr. Todd Hoffman. Hello there. And recurring guest, the magnificent Heather Allred. Ooh, hello. Glad to have you back. Thank you for Once having again, me Once again, you can check us out on social media at WSTR Media. All one word, all lowercase. Heather. Yes. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Oh, it's, it's okay. so good to have you back. Oh, thank you for having me back. I, I think she was just uh, smitten by the magnificent. I, I was a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Well, you earned it. Uh, I mean, it, you can only take so much of just uh, just me and Todd yeah. just talking back and forth. So good to have some variety now and again. Thank go. you for answering the call that we put out like a day yesterday because uh, we totally planned that, right, Todd? We totally did, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, for, for what it's worth, we reached out to Will, too, and he couldn't make it, so ah. uh, thankfully Heather was able to. <laughs> I, but, eat, uh, I that, have no life, and I'm always available. <laughs> <laughs> now you understand what it's like to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, that's, and that's how it works. You put out... Uh, put out some bait for two or three, you get one bite, maybe. So, here we are. And now for our feature presentation. Todd, the hour's upon Aaron, us. We're like... It, it, is, it is less than 48 hours away. Wow. Well, by the time this <laughs> drops, it'll be like 24 hours, depending yeah, on where yeah, you are. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Depend, depending on when you listen to it, it might be less than 24 12 hours, one hour, I don't know. But yeah, by the time this episode drops, it will be one official day. Todd, when, when are you going to see it? I am going to see it uh, at 7.40 on Thursday the 14th. 7.40? P.M., yes, P.M. I got you beat. I'm seeing it at 7 P.M. Ah! Well, it's probably going to be... Se- up my phone. It's probably going to be 7.40 by the time the previews yeah. are over. Right, right. Heather, Heather, when are you going to go see it? Um, I'm going on Sunday, the 17th. Oh. So I will potentially be off of social media. For you like you four better, days. like, throw your phone <laughs> into, like, the reservoir tank at the toilet and just, like, leave it there yeah. for, like, the entire weekend. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't look, don't touch, don't even think about yeah. it. Turn off the TV, yeah, yeah. read a book. Yeah. <laughs> Read a book. <laughs> Write a book. <laughs> Write a book. Yeah. <laughs> Write your memoirs, you know. <laughs> there you go. Clutch your porg plush. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just plug the porg. It's going right. to be great. Exactly. So if both you need of, to both contact, of you have porg yeah. plushes. Yeah, we do. It's... Technically, it's Trent, so yeah. I'll, I'll, play, I'll play that card. Oh, but... that, that's Aww. what you tell yourself. Yeah, yeah, I can't play that card. <laughs> no, but he Own he it. is all the way from Florida. I did buy him in Disney in Florida, so <gasps> mine's from California. Whoa! So, we... <laughs> Nationwide porgs. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so mm-hmm. you know, yes, it's uh, how did we get here? I the, just uh, I, I walked from my dorm into into the freezing <laughs> freezing right. Chicago winds oh, and yes. uh, up, yeah. up to right. up to exactly. the fourth floor of the Sweeting Building and I'm sitting in the 
studio right now, but that's not what you mean. You're talking no, about I mean, The Last how, Jedi. Yeah, I just want to, you know, bring our listeners up to speed. Like, how you know, I feel like we've been talking about Last Jedi for like three years. Well, that's because it has been three years. So take us on back. June 20th. Yeah, June 20th, 2014. That's when they announced uh, that Ryan Johnson will be the director and writer of episode seven. So we're like, whoa. Episode eight. Then, uh, episode eight. Yes, my, my Roman numerals. You're, you're almost there. I was almost there. That's okay. <laughs> episode eight. Yes. So then uh, basically September 2015. So like fast forward like a whole year, basically. And they went back to Achu or Skellig Michael Island in Ireland. And they filmed... Uh, you know, the cliffhanger again. So they went back and uh, and did the, the filming there. And then official production began in February 2016. And it was under the working title of Space Bear. Space Bear. <laughs> Space Bear. So um, <laughs> wow. people with the, they had the crew jackets and they're all Space Bear. Are the Porgs so, the Space Bears? Is that how this works? I, I don't know. It was a space panda, I think. I, I'm pretty sure. So, well, and then maybe it's uh, better than Blue Harvest. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, each each um, each production kind of goes under a pseudonym. I don't remember what Force Awakens was, but it was it was something catchy. I can't remember. I'm surprised but I had then, space uh, at all in the in the working title. <laughs> right. Well. Like Space Panda doesn't really, you know. Nah. Know. Nah. So um principal photography wrapped up on July twenty second of twenty sixteen. So and then after that, Johnson began uh, began uh editing it on August fifteenth, twenty sixteen. So and then obviously uh the really tragic news was that about uh it was the end of December when we found out that Carrie Fisher passed away. Shoot, it's almost been a year. Yeah, I know. Oh gosh, so. yeah. Heather, do you remember where you were at when that happened? Oh gosh, December twenty seventh. So that is post Christmas. <laughs> yes. So I know this is my life, people. I have to like, where was I? Um, I do think I was at home, and I saw it on Facebook. Hmm. But then at that moment, you can never trust Facebook. Yeah. So, you know, you start to Google. You you were wise to do that. And then you have to trust Google-ish, you know, so that's always hard. But, um, but yeah, no. And then it just sort of, I was like, and I, I will admit, I didn't know where they were, quote unquote, in production of the film. Oh, right. Um, Because, you know. While I'm, you know, I have nerd levels, I, you know, not quite at that nerd level. And you're not run a podcast every week about Star Wars and Hunt Town, every little bit of info (laughs) you can through Google Alerts, nerd level. (laughs) I'm a guest, my guest on the show. So I only, no, I'm just kidding. Um, But yeah, so that was my initial response. And then I was like, well, now what are they going to do? And then. Uh, yeah, and just this idea of um, trying to figure out then what the future held for that character's legacy, if you will, um, and if they were gonna give her a fond farewell. Yeah, that was truly my initial response. Like, well, now what are we gonna do? Like, she's kind of pivotal. <laughs> yeah, I, that's one of the bigger questions about the Last Jedi, isn't it? <clears throat> Well, I I think it's pretty much been confirmed that they didn't change anything in episode um uh, in episode eight. So, right. So. Yeah, and then so obviously I, feeling bad for her family and all of, of that, but um, but and also kind of fun to see fan response to it, not to celebrate her death, but more just like a commemoration. To see a commemoration like people from all over coming together 
you know, and sharing memories. I think that's huge. Right. Yeah. And also just realizing how influential that character was. Mm-hmm. And, and as well as Carrie Fisher, I mean, but the character itself of Princess Leia really inspired a lot of women and and um, also, I mean, just Carrie Fisher's struggle with uh, her own addictions and just being really open and honest about mm-hmm. that. I think really mm-hmm. people really related to that. And she was definitely more real and less fakey Hollywood. <laughs> mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she was a mental health advocate, so, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's super sad news, especially when they just literally kind of, you know, kind of wrapped everything up and, you know, Johnson's in the editing room. And then, you know, the freaky thing about that whole thing was that she passed away and then her mom passed away 24 hours later, which is yeah. just yep. the craziest thing. So. So, yeah, that that happened already. You know, it's almost been a year, you know, that that's happened. And then um, really. um even at that same time, uh, John Williams was already scoring the picture, which is super early in post. I mean, uh, it's it's pretty early in post production that he did that. But I, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but maybe they thought, well, he might not make it, so let's get him <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> let's get him in the studio because a lot of times, I mean, he's pretty much scoring that you know like two or three months before you know it comes out but it this is a clearly a year before everything is done you know but so yeah so that happened maybe um, they just wanted and, him to take his time you know he's earned it yeah well yeah I, I it sounds like from the notes that i read that you know he's he started he started kind of recording back in 2016 but then they finally wrapped everything up like april 2017 so Okay. I mean, so yeah, and then um, the film title "The Last Jedi" was announced on January twenty third, twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. So now we're now we're in this year, you know. Mm-hmm. And then um, our our minds melted at uh, uh, at the celebration in Orlando in April when the first teaser trailer dropped for oh. "The Last Jedi." Oh yeah, we had uh, we had Hank call in and give us some vital. <laughs> Vital info about that. Yeah. So I, I think that was the same weekend, Aaron, as like C2E2, or it was right around there that we were like. Yeah, that was crazy yeah. packed uh, yeah, it was, it for was crazy. Star Wars and nerd fandom everywhere. Yeah. And then the trailer dropped and we lost our minds. And then kind of fast forward to October, uh, Bears Monday Night Football, halftime, the official trailer dropped. And. We saw our crystal foxes, and my mind melted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and millions of dollars exchanged hands, yeah. and tickets yeah. were sold. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. so, yeah, go ahead, Heather. Uh, I was going to say, so I have a trailer story for you guys. Oh, boy, here we play. go. I love it. So I saw the teaser, which was, what, like the 22nd whatever. Yes. And then, so my brother, Bruce, shout out to Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Um, Hi, Bruce. He, he is a diehard. Um, he is a purist about Star Wars. Oh, boy. Um, specifically for The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. He watched mm. and is co- continuing not watching any trailers leading up to the movie. Um, and so in as much camaraderie, I actually didn't watch any of the additional trailers for The Last Jedi. Okay. Un- mm. So until- you, you've... Oh, you only ahead. seen the t- teaser trailer. Yeah. So okay. just the very kind of that little opening sequence with like the ground shaking. Breathe. Um, yes. Just you know, breathe. Just that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically like that. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. And I remember uh-huh. uh, whatever ship it was that was that long ago, like hitting the earth and the earth turning red. Those are the so, two so things I remember. So you haven't rewatched it. I have not rewatched it. Okay. <laughs> However, I went to go see the new Thor movie because that's yes. what you do. Yes. Right. And so it was in front of that. And as you know, I mean, you can, it's like any kind of movie franchise. You kind of know when that first beat of a music drops, you know, oh, it's this movie or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if it's any good. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce, look, Bruce looked at me and he his eyes got really big. Oh, no. And I said, I'm on it. 
And so he literally closed his eyes, plugged his ears, and like tucked his head down. Oh no! <laughs> so he didn't watch it. Oh, okay. Emergency position. Emergency <laughs> position. Brace for impact. <laughs> Brace so for impact. So then, out of the goodness of my heart to protect my brother, I watched it so that I could tell him when it was over. Wow, taking one for the team. Wow. So wow. I did watch the full trailer. Right. Okay. And now there's no going back. So now I'm ready. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, I, I think it was awesome too because Heather texted me like right after the movie. She's like, Thor was good, but uh, yeah, I protected Bruce. And I'm just like, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. And I would do it for anybody else if I had to. <laughs> right. I'll take one for the team. That's <laughs> awesome. As in, I've not seen any of the new trailers for the Avengers movie. But that's a different conversation mm-hmm. for a different day. Well, um, that's the other thing. There's, I, I mean, I kind of lost track, but there has been probably 16 known TV spots. So Whoa. these are like 30, 30 second commercials, basically. And some of them have new footage. Some have like just like kind of flipped around and they all have different themes. But yeah, at least 16 or so TV spots. So it's been, it's, it's been, uh, Disney's been busy, you know? So, yeah. so yeah, there, there's all that. So now, now we are right at the precipice of the last Jedi. <laughs> so right I thought it'd cusp. be fun. I, we're on the cusp, but I thought it'd be fun. <laughs> thought it'd be fun if we looked at each character and just kind of did a round table of like where you see them, what do you see the story going All like right. their little arc? So why don't we start? Why don't we start right from the top? Let's do it. Luke Skywalker, obviously played by Mark Hamill. Heather, what do you think about what's Luke's story in the last Jedi? Oh man. Um, well, I'm excited to kind of see, I think him take on this, this Yoda role, if you will. Um, and, be kind of becoming the teacher, becoming the one who guides. Um, but with a twist, if you will, because everything has to have a twist. Of course. Um, where, I mean, he's got history and he's got potential more, you know, I don't want to use the word heartbreak, but more ups and downs than, you know, Yoda did and how that would change things. Um, potentially in light of not knowing you know, the Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia situation, you know, when will that come into play? Will that harbor anything? Mm. You know, when will he find out about, you know, um, Han Solo? You know, will that shake up the universe? Right. But, yeah, so I'm excited to see how he approaches this mentorship, if you will. Okay. Very good. Aaron, your feelings, sir? I was about to comment on... uh... Heather's analogy of Luke as Yoda. It's it's all about that ring theory, dude. It all comes into play. Mm, okay. um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, well, what do you, what does a guy do like when he saves the galaxy only to see it return uh, right back to the brink of ruin again? Um, I think that's seriously going to mess with Luke. Uh, maybe he knows about the First Order already. Um, maybe he doesn't. But in any case, um, we know from The Force Awakens that like a bunch of his students were wiped out. And it's like, you know, Luke saves the galaxy. He tries to restore order, perhaps with like a Jedi Order 2. Um Electric boogaloo. Uh, so he <laughs> tries that again, and o- only yeah. for that to be cut down. And it's like, I think he's going to be seriously cynical and seriously burned by other people. Um, and that's not really the Luke we know. Uh, last time we saw him, you know, he's in Return of the Jedi, uh, still fairly on the straight and narrow, but you definitely feel like he's being tugged towards the dark side pretty heavily. And it's interesting that we have that parallel between him and uh, like Kylo Ren being tugged towards the light side. 
and it'd be really interesting to see how that's resolved. Um, I predicted before, I still want to see it. I want him to have, like, force powers like you wouldn't believe, like, conjure up force lightning storms and, like, just tear huge boulders out of the earth and stuff like that. Just crazy stuff we haven't seen done with the force yet. Very good. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, Aaron, with Luke, uh, and uh, with Heather as well. Like, so I'm not going to say Yoda. I mean, he's basically Obi Wan. So mm -hmm. he's in that role, in that mentor role, but he's a reluctant mentor. And I don't think he wants to do it because of what happened to Ben Solo Kylo. And I also feel like I want him to be crazy. I want him to also yield that power and. I don't know, like touch Ray and they go into the future and the past or something like that, where Ooh. he has that kind of power to see through the force, you know, like Dr. And Manhattan. I think that's yeah. Well, like, um, I mean, have you seen Dr. Strange? That's basically what I want. I yes. want Dr. Strange, but in Star Wars. <laughs> so that's <laughs> I, I, I would that's accept what, that. Yes. Yeah. I, that's <laughs> basically what I want. So I kind of want that kind of uh, trippy kind of stuff in, with, with Luke. All right, so Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, what is her story arc in The Last Jedi? Aaron, what do you think? Oh, man. Um, okay, so last we see her, uh, she has this, taken on the mantle of being a general for the... Are they called the Rebellion still? The Resistance? No, the Resistance. The Resistance. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> you know... So she friend. goes all vive la France. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they've, they've just had their uh, first big victory against uh, uh, the First Order by destroying Starkiller Base. Um, I mean, it'd be, I don't want C-SPAN in, in space again, but it would be interesting to see what kind of backlash they have for the, like, five planets that got obliterated. Um, which one of them was basically the Senate, the, the cap, you know, the capital. Yeah. Um, yeah. it'd be interesting to see her kind of deal with that or like other planetary forces that may not like the resistance all that much. Um, but, but the arm, but that's the other thing, like the arm of the government is gone. Yeah. So what are they going to do? Cause <laughs> Princess Leia is like. <laughs> You know, she she's the figurehead of the resistance now. We we don't have like a Mon Mothma to throw under the bus. Um so it'd be interesting to see how she handles that. And you know, there there's still there's gonna be some drama between her and Kylo Ren, I'm sure of it. Um to what degree, I don't know, but they're family members on opposite sides of a war and mm -hmm. their paths have to cross at some point. Um, it's already crossed with uh, with Han and Ben, and uh, how it will cross again, I'm not sure. Um, and of course, the elephant in the room with her gone. What does that mean for her role in Nine? And what kind of send off are they going to give her? Yeah, I don't know. Heather, what do you think? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, the elephant in the room, and just what they're going to do with that you know, and hopefully she gets a warrior send off, if you will. But uh, I'm personally kind of intrigued to see if um, they'll approach some of her character in more of the mother standpoint, as opposed to the political standpoint, um, and just open up that door and see where it takes us. Um, will the idea of a family Trump politics, will politics Trump family? Um, that's what I'm actually kind of curious about. I don't know if it's the female perspective I'm bringing, um, but I just think it would be a fun avenue to go down with her because I look at Leia from the beginning to this point, um, and she's always just been very strong-minded and had her own thing, you know, you know, yes, a princess, but turning into a very strong woman that I'm curious to see if they will go down the mother road. 
When you say mm. the mother road, are you saying like um, that she's mothering the younger generation into the rebellion oh, resistance, or it kind of similar to what Aaron was talking about? Just her interactions with Kylo. Oh, okay. You know, and will they have an interaction? Will there be that like awkward tension in the room together kind of a thing? Um, I, but I, I yeah, like that I, perspective that you provide too, like a mother right, to the I was, so. I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more or less that she is trying to pass on that rebellious spirit into Poe. <clears throat> Interesting. Po, yeah, so... Um, po. Well, I'm also curious to, to see where Rose fits where I, I feel like she's going to so. take that motherly role <laughs> and apply that to, you know, somebody to take on the reins of the Rebellion Resistance, you know, so hmm. that's how I kind of see her. That's a good point. I hadn't, uh, we haven't seen Princess Leia as a mother, really, yet, yes. so that'd be yeah. really mm-hmm. cool to see. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I, I f- kind of feel like she's at that point where she already has, you know, she had a broken relationship with Han. She has a broken relationship with Ben, and she's trying to mend this because of everything that's going on. I feel like she tries to pass that on to, you know, Poe or somebody in the resistance to carry on that torch, you know, carry on the flame, basically. So, uh, moving along, I know, um, you know, spoiler alert here, uh, Han Solo died. So, Harrison Ford. <laughs> Wait, do, what? <laughs> what? What? Wait, what? <laughs> Sorry, it's been a year. If you haven't found out, I apologize, but. All right. Statute of limitations yeah. on spoilers for The Force Awakens <laughs> is over. Yes, it's over. <laughs> right, right. Um, do we have a funeral in the last Jedi for Han Solo. Yes. I mean, Padme okay. had a funeral, so. <laughs> you, you said that, yeah. Aaron's like, absolutely. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. I mean, if Padme could get one, surely. <laughs> surely Han Solo can get one. But there's no body, dude. I don't know. Just do a Viking funeral. Just like put a put an effigy in a boat, sail it off to off the lake and then just light it on fire. That's all you need. <laughs> That's all you need, man. That's all you need. All right. Heather, you think think we'll get a funeral scene for Han Solo? I don't know that I even thought about it. <laughs> I am putting that thought into your brain right now. But you what are do now you think? putting it into my brain. Um, right, yeah. Humans are wonderful I'm creatures. Gonna, I'm going to go no. I'm going to do devil's advocate. I don't know that there will be. Let the record show. Heather said no. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we will be keeping score. Okay. Yeah, right. I don't right. I don't think they're not going to talk about him. I just don't know if there will be something official. You know what? I'm eating my words because, uh, was it John Boyega in an interview said that they're not really going to have time to mourn <laughs> those who those who fall? Yeah, that's true. He did. We did quote that like the other week, man. So, yeah. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I think there's going to be, I mean, I'm going to say yes. So, okay. All right. The uh, next solo, Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver. What is his deal? Heather. He's got some anger issues he needs to work on, you guys. (laughs) Yeah. A little counseling, maybe? I don't know. Um, Yeah, I'm excited for him, actually. Um, I'm excited to see what is in his brain i mean i don't Mm. because i don't know that we know i don't know is he a five-year-old boy who's just really angry is he a mature teenager that has found his path um is he being manipulated is he not is he making his own decisions um these are all the questions i have about him i don't understand him (laughs) as a character but i'm fascinated by him you know um yeah I'm excited to see his interaction with Ray. Um, you know, does he get a moment of showing a good guy or is he just going to stay this bad guy? Hmm. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> no, it's Star Wars. It's Heather. Star Wars, that's right. Then there'd be I no know, movie. Sorry. 
there be no movie, no point. Right, no, that's, yeah. That's so I think for me, Kylo, I'm excited to see the continued internal mental emotional struggle. I want more of that because I don't understand him. I want to understand him. Yeah. Like what's the motive? What's the motive? Right. How can I fix him? Is kind of where it's stemming from. <laughs> oh, you're taking the girlfriend approach. Like I can fix you. <laughs> I can fix you. That's right. <laughs> you just need to buddy. Aaron, what, Aaron, what say you? Um, you ever see the infomercial for flex tape? <laughs> it looks like he bought himself some. No. Oh, he did have some flex tape. Yeah. Those were uh, uh those were back to strips, my friend. I don't know. I think it's still flex tape because that's a lot of damage. Uh, but um Yeah. Well they moved the scar he moved the scar too. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. He's 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 the guy. He can do whatever. So right, right, right. um I mean it's it's hard to it's hard to talk about this without resorting to spoilery material in the in the trailers. Um, well, just just where do you like you know along Heather's lines? Like where do you where do you want the character to go? Like Heather said, a lot of it's just like finding motivation for why he's doing what he's doing. It's. It's not that we don't have enough of it in The Force Awakens, but we don't have enough context, and we don't really see anything from his point of view um, in the story. And so, like, maybe the closest we get is when he's, like, having conversations with Snoke, but then even still, mm -hmm. it's not him, really. It's... It's like, it's like eavesdropping on a conversation when really... Um, what what I'd like to see is like what his internal dialogue is and what his emotions are relating to certain things. And most of the most of the Force Awakens is not really centered around that. So that's something I'd like more of. Yeah, the internal yeah. dialogue. What say you, Todd? I'm kind of I'm kind of on the fence with him because I don't know is you know kind of expecting like is he going to turn back good or is he going full evil personally i want him to go totally evil i want him to be like what super boring yeah, i want him to be no <laughs> i want him to be like consumed you know by and take his own path you know so that's that's kind of where i i see him um I, Cause like you're right, like in the Force Awakens, he's just doing what Snoke tells him, and I want him to be like more, you know, of himself. And honestly, I need to see some right Knights of Ren, man. I need to see like more than just that one little second of them in the rain. Yeah, because I kind of don't wanna, even know who they are. Yeah. No, we don't. And I kind of want to see it. Honestly, I want to see Kylo's backstory through Luke's eyes. That's what I want to see. Mm. I think that's. I think that would be super powerful. You know, it's kind of cool. Cause the, yeah, yeah. Because if if there's parallelism parallelism between Ray and Kylo, and what like I would love to see like him training Ray, and then he flashes back to something that Kylo's doing the same thing. I mm. think that would be amazing. So, speaking of which, Ray Daisy Ridley. Heather, what is going? Yes. What's Ray's? What's Ray's story arc in the Last Jedi? Well, obviously that force sensitivity thing, and you know her training on a rock, um, <laughs> <laughs> is going to happen. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I guess I'm intrigued to see where that force takes her. Um, I know we talked in a previous. Um, podcast about the idea of, you know, the gray um, <clears throat> option, this kind of neutral situation. And I'm, I'm curious if that's going to actually happen. I would love for mm. that to happen. That yeah. idea of bringing balance back, I think, where Todd just is so desperate for someone to go completely evil. 
And then I'm like, why can't we all just get along? Sunshines and daisies and things that right. bringing in someone. No, no can, pun intended. But, um, <laughs> it really wasn't. I don't think I heard it till after I said it. <laughs> um, but yeah, then this idea of this character who I can dabble in both for lack of words right now. But um, so, yeah, so I don't know what that looks like, but I do love the idea of in her interactions with Luke, how she will affect Luke's mental state. Like, will it bring on flashbacks? Will it bring predictions? Will it? Yeah. How will that film editing, if you will, take us back and forth and things like that? Aaron. What do you feel about Ray? Oh man, so, same thing with with Kylo. There's just so many questions that we don't have answered. Um, like, you know, what is she doing on uh, Jakku? Um, <laughs> why her Why her family leave her there when they said they were coming back? Did were they genuine about it? Um, why didn't right. they come back? Who are the the parents? <laughs> right. Uh, it's like yeah. an episode of Murphy going on. <laughs> or uh, not Murphy? What's it called? Never mind. I don't, Joke's I gone. don't know. Um, <laughs> you are not the father. It. That guy, Maury. Maury. Got there it. you go. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Snagged it. Snagged it. Professional Got it. podcasting. Ten out of ten. <laughs> like and rate us on iTunes. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, we there, there's so much we need to know and. Yeah, she's in a very fragile state, not in the sense of her strength, but in her alignment with the force, um, mm -hmm. where she's obviously got just tremendous potential um, to to wield the force. And so does Kylo. And he's going to be receiving training from Snoke, presumably. Uh, she is certainly going to be receiving training from Luke, and it'd be it'd be too easy, I would say. It'd be too easy for Kylo Ren to just branch off into the dark side direction and Rey to just branch off cleanly into the light side uh, direction. I think there's going to be some, some twists and turns there that are going to be pretty surprising, um, especially because you got cranky old Luke. Um, <laughs> and depending on where he, where his story ends up, whether you right, right, right. go like the great Jedi <laughs> now, route now, or yeah. Yeah. just like a yeah, uh, like... faded light side hero, um, that could certainly influence where Ray's going to end up. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Aaron. I feel like, um, I'd like as I said earlier, I want Kylo's path to be clean, like go full dark, you know, but I want Ray, I'm with you, Heather, as well. I kind of want the middle ground. I kind of want her to dabble in both. I think that would be very intriguing, you know. But you got a good point, Aaron. It's like, you know, it. There, if it's both clean, like, hey, Kylo goes dark, Ray goes light, you know, and you got cranky grandpa Luke, it's like, it, there's not, it's got to be a little messier than that. And I think that's, that's what we're going to see in The Last Jedi. So, oh, we're so close. <laughs> oh my gosh. I want uh, it. Okay. I want it. Finn. <laughs> Finn, John Boyega. Aaron, what say you about Finn? What's Finn doing in Last Jedi? There's only one thing I want from Finn in this movie. Okay. And it's to okay. have a stunning bromance with Poe. <laughs> <laughs> they had the whole buddy cop thing going on for like five minutes yeah. of the force awakens and i'm like they could have like a whole series together their their <laughs> their, their chemistry is awesome i want more of the two of them yeah. together and that's all i want you're like you're like finn's still wearing that jacket from poe dude oh, this yeah, is a dude. sweet jacket dude. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, dude it's so good <laughs> we all need a friend uh, like that that's right. That's yeah, man, right. It fits you better. Take it. <laughs> right. Well, you want a friend that renames you in like 30 seconds of seeing you. Dude, 
Right? You're not F1, FN 3127 or whatever it was. You're, you're Finn. I'm calling you Finn. Oh, Dude, yeah, I Paul, like that. Paul is the cool guy at the lunch table we always dreamed of but never quite got. <laughs> so he's, he's the cool guy. He's, yeah, you know, he's, he's the top jock in the resistance, like wildly yes, popular. Yes. Uh, super popular, handsome, yeah. and he just invites mm-hmm. you over to the lunch table, sits you right down. He's funny, and he's like, he, he just gives you a nickname right away, and you're, yeah, you, you could not you're be fed. more different than everybody you're else in the, in the group, crowd. but you're accepted because of him. And it's like, oh, oh, yes. And yeah. Finn is that dude, and yeah. we live extemporaneously through him. And it's like, <laughs> yes, please give me more <laughs> Poe and Finn uh, bromance <laughs> adventures. That's bromance, awesome. Yeah. Ah, yeah. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, Heather, what do you want to see from Poe? <laughs> well, um, I think I would love either some back history, a little bit of story about how he became a stormtrooper, um, and see if that factors into him leaving and changing. Um, will he ever struggle again with his decision? Um, someone get into his head oh, at a certain point yeah. in the process. Right. You know, are there like code words they're going to say to him that's going to like put him back in a time Whoa. long ago? You know, oh, I don't know. Like Manchurian candidate. Or, like, kind of, no, yeah. like, like Order 66 and like Finn just like snaps and like, <laughs> oh, he goes Robo like, Finn. freaking out. <laughs> he goes Robo Finn and kills Poe. No. no! no! <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you know, and then and then the bromance lives because, you know, yeah. he's saved by Poe. It's all dramatic. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that would be an interesting place for him to go, not only as a character, but as an actor, if that's something that they look into. Or is he just new and excited and ready to, you know, get reunited with the people and take charge? I don't know. Is it that yeah. clean and simple? Again, is it that... Are they getting kind of clean stories, or are they going to throw some complexity in there for us? I uh, I think yeah. But I would I, love I'm gonna to see say... a little bit of resistance, <laughs> um, or hesitancy in a situation that then shows us that he's truly a good guy. Hmm. I'm going to say the opposite. I I'm going to say that that's where I'm at. Finn is not hesitant, and that he's full blown. I'm resistance, you know, like I, I'm, I left that life, you know, and now I'm totally and bringing more Intel about the first order to the resistance that they could help use, you know, and show that he's kind of a leader. And I, I'm pretty sure there's some plot, some kind of subplot with Finn. Um, I think there's a mole in the resistance and I think Finn is going to, I think Finn is going to take charge and figure that out. Or my... do you think he's going to get thrown under the bus because he's the new guy? Oh, yeah. Maybe maybe they pin it on Finn because he's like, yo, he's first order. And, you know, I don't know. He's not I, one I, of us. Know, he's not one of us. But then Poe's like, dude, it's my dude. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Poe, Oscar Isaac, what do you think there, Heather, about Poe? What's what's Poe's little backstory? I don't know. Um, I like Poe. He obviously had BB-8, so that's a big win for him. Oh yeah, that's that's uh, the other body. That's the other body cop movie, BB-8 and Poe. <laughs> you know. Um. Yeah. So it would be it would be, it would be a great sitcom <laughs> with like. BB-8, like BB-8 and Poe are like rooming together, and then Finn shows up as the new roommate, and BB-8's <laughs> got like some jealousy issues. Anyways, Jeez, continue. BB-8 has the know. better yeah. bed, so, even though he's the pet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so what what do you think? Po, yeah, what's Poe doing, I mean, I guess doing, definitely Heather? just flesh his character out more. I feel like I don't know him well enough to know where he's going. Right. Um, just obviously in light of The Force Awakens and some things. So. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of, I, you know, a bit just this whole, like, yeah, have him kind of take leadership and rally the troops a bit. Um, it's tricky. I like him. He's not the one I'm most excited about, though. (laughs) (laughs) Can I say that? We all have opinions. Uh, We all have opinions. opinions. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. So, no, I think, you know, 
I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm the girl who started because of teddy bears on an island in the forest and obviously love droids and other things. But, you know, for me, I, I think I'm going to go with similar to what Aaron had mentioned when we talked about Finn is I loved Poe because of his interaction with Finn. So I want to mm. see more of that. Um, okay. I don't know Poe as himself, so I don't know what I want for him. I just know that he's a good guy. Okay. Aaron, Poe. Um, he's basically our link to the Resistance Air Force um, or X-Wing Force. I don't know what they call it. But uh, so it'd be really cool to see some groovy space battles led by him. Um, okay. And I know we're going to get it. And he's, I don't know if he's kind of our link to the ground troops as well. Maybe that's going to be filled by another character, but... We care about the X-Wing pilots because we care about Poe. And so some some X-Wing love would be awesome coming from him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because we did get that a little bit with, like, Force Awakens when he was the, bla you know, black leader and, you know, rallying the X-Wing pilots and taking lead and, you know. Um, so, and he went on, like, a, you know, the, 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 that's a very cool sequence in The Force Awakens where... Finn is on the ground looking up in the sky and Poe goes on a basically 10, 10 kill streak, <laughs> <laughs> takes out all the TIE fighters and, you know, you just see the numbers popping up. One, two, three, four, yep. you know, it's like, that's one hell of a pilot. And you knew it was Poe, you know, Poe's like tearing it up. So yeah, I agree with you. I like to see a little bit more of that. Um, I'm, you know, he's in, I mean, again, it's not spoilers. It's in the trailer. His X-Wing has a modified rocket on the back of the ship. What the heck does that mean? Where is he going? What's happening? So I'm kind of interested to see what what happens there. So well, pew pew it, boom boom. I, I, it, it's it's a some kind of big booster rocket. So I think he's going to the I would love to see unknown regions. Like he's kind of going deep space, man. So um, but I, I, I agree, like, I, again, I think what I said earlier with Princess Leia, I really feel like Princess Leia is going to bestow him more leadership, and he's he's going to have more leadership in the resistance. All right. I would say this is the elephant in the room. Snoke. <gasps> Heather, <gasps> what's <Yeah>. your Snoke? <laughs> Heather, what's your Snoke theory? Snoke. What's your Snoke, Snoke? theory? Um, yeah, I mean, I... Obviously, don't know as much as you guys do. However, I will go sort of back in time. I would love to see him with Kylo, and I would love for Kylo to stick it to him a little bit. It's <laughs> <laughs> very, it's very Kinda, Sith like, uh, I, Heather. <laughs> well, you know, um, it's been bound to happen. I'm sure. I'm gonna dark side somewhere, but I, yeah, I guess I'm excited to see where he goes with his leadership. Um, will it be as strong? Will it be weakened? Um, is, is his face going to survive? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's held together Can by Elmer's school glue and twine. I, seriously, I just... <laughs> He's been through a lot, it looks like, you know? Yeah, and so, yeah. what's that going to do? But, um, <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a part of me that really just kind of wants someone to take him out. And just sort of, like, really shake up this supreme leader title. I don't know. Again, I'm talking to, I want the good side to win. I want it all to <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. Sunshines and bunnies and all that kind of stuff. But no, um, I, I think it, for my gray Jedi theory to pan out, I feel like he needs to go away, and that's what I want okay. to see. Okay, Aaron, what do you? What's your Snoke theory, man? Uh, well, you've you've heard my crackpot theory before about the dark virgin <laughs> birth. Um, yeah, the dark virgin birth. <laughs> yes, which basically states that he is a, pr a product of a primeval um, 
dark side force created uh, as a vacuum when Darth Vader and Palpatine took a step off the earth. Um, What we know basically now is um, that he has some hand in basically creating Kylo Ren or bringing him to where what he is today, but Kylo Ren mm-hmm. is still not finished. There's more that Snoke wants for him, and it'd be really interesting to figure out what exactly that is. Um, other than that, I'm really worried about Snoke just being like your standard bad guy character, and I really mm-hmm. don't want that for him. Um, what I'm hoping what will happen is that he becomes Palpatine number two, and oh. he's just like really scheming, really pulling the strings uh, behind the stage. And I want to see some like mind blowing stuff from him. Um, it's just very scheming and conniving and manipulative. That would be awesome. Um, either that, or he's basically a foil against Luke, where you know, Luke is like oh, casting yeah. force lightning storms and ripping up the earth and Snoke is responding with some crazy like black hole stuff and like force <laughs> tornadoes and just like oh, crazy you're, you're going, stuff. You're going full out, man. Yeah. E- either of those would be nice. <laughs> You'll take either one. Okay. Um so uh, this is my uh, shout out to my buddy Brian. So um, me and my my buddy Brian, we have a bet. Uh, it's basically he feels like there's going to be revelation about who Snoke is, and I'm saying, nope, you got to wait till episode nine. So I don't think we know. I don't think we're going to get a lot from Snoke. I think it's going to be still mysterious. It's basically of his origin. I would like him to be really, really old, like connection to the first Jedi or something like that, you know, like Yoda uh, grew up something... on his street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. He's Yoda old or even older than that. I kind of want him to be ancient. I want him to mm. be, I, that's what I'm looking for. Um, what if he's been sleeping this you. whole time? Yeah. Maybe like, he's in like, you know, there's been a disturbance in the forest and it awoken him from his slumber. Woke him. Yeah. Yeah. He well, I mean, again, Snoke got woke. He got woke. Snoke got woke because the Force did awaken because he even says that, you know, that's in the trailer of The Force Awakens. Have you felt it? You know, there's an awakening. Um, and that's both for Rey and Kylo. You know, that's what it, it, it's both. And maybe Snoke has been somewhat behind the scenes. I mean, this this is where, again, where uh, I, there is some parallelisms between A New Hope and Empire. In A New Hope... They blow up the Death Star, victory. You come into Empire, and they didn't miss a beat. It's six months later. Empire's got Darth Vader's got a six mile ship. You know he's he's cruising in his executor, and six mile the Empire's. Ship. <laughs> it's, it's just huge. It's true though. It's, it's true. Um, you know, and the Empire's stronger than ever, and you feel like, wait, they just blew up the Death Star, and there should, you know, the rebels are on the run. And I kind of see the same thing because they just blew up the Star Killer base. They know where the First Order knows where they're at, so they have to leave that base. And you know, the Resistance is going to be on the run. And I feel like the First Order is even more, you know, more powerful when we get into Last Jedi. So I, I definitely see parallelisms there. But I really want Snoke to be from like the unknown regions, like deep space, like you don't even know where he comes from. And that's kind of what I want for Snoke. So, all right, move it on. Uh, Maz, what, what's, what's our little granny pineapple granny doing? You know what? I really want her to yeah. like bake a nice cooked meal and a cake for like <laughs> Poe and Shane. <laughs> You boys are so busy fighting in the resistance. You got to you got to eat up. <laughs> um that's awesome. That's amazing. What what I really like to know is how she got Luke's lightsaber. Uh, ah, cuz so. as far as we know, it just like tumbled down into a gas like a gas giant planet. Um right. How does one retrieve such a thing? 
So yeah. uh, <laughs> knowing how how that occurred would be nice. Um, yeah, and also like you, you you were talking about Snoke being super duper old and just having seen things for millennia. Yes. Um, yeah, so is Maz. Like she's been around for yes, so that's long true. that she sees yeah. the same eyes in different people. Um, mm -hmm. And it'd be it'd be interesting to stir up that pot and see what see what uh, see what cooks up. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, Heather, what do you say about Maz? What's your deal? Hey, hey I love her. She makes me very happy. <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> she, um, she kind of reminds me of that character that it is. She's kind of like that old granny who has all this wisdom, but will also tell you to like sit down, put your get your elbows off the table, yes. and let me tell you what it is. And yeah. You don't talk back so to granny. You don't talk no. back to Granny. And no. so, yeah, I, obviously, yeah, the lightsaber situation, I was going to say the same thing. Where did it come from? How does she get all of her little goodies? Um, is she going to have an interaction with someone that, like, pulls them out of some, like, funk? Like, you have got to pull yourself together. Like, yes. <laughs> oh. You know. You know well, granny she, slap. Like, granny slap. Kind of a, Boom. Yeah, like seriously. Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Like Edna Mode. Yes. I was just, I was. And I wasn't going to say that, but I was a little embarrassed. But yes, as we both, like, you've got to pull yourself together. <laughs> because I feel like, you know, we've talked about all these other characters leading up to it, and I don't know that there's someone who will just tell it like it is. Like, we are at war, there are good guys, there are bad guys, you're in the middle, what are you going to do about it? Um, but I think she's got the validity and the history and obviously has this treasure trove of stuff to kind of back up what she's saying. Um, so that's where that's where I'm at. I hope she kind of lays down the law with somebody. Um, but yeah, kind of also opens up some backstory for us. She'll be a good storyteller. Yeah, I don't know if we'll ever get the origin of where she got the lightsaber, but that would be cool. And I kind of agree with you, Heather. I, it would be good. She is a leader and she has... I mean, she's kind of play. she's like grandma slash Yoda because she is, she has that wisdom. And so it'd be cool to see if, if she's interacting with the three main ones, you know, Poe, Finn or Ray, mm -hmm. uh, to, to develop any kind of, you know, wisdom or kind of snap them out of it. You know, I would love to see her slap one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like, yes, please. <laughs> like physically slap. Yeah. Like physically, like <laughs> snap out of it, you know? Um, so yeah, that would be cool. I, I think it would be cool to see see that develop. All right. Yes. General Hux. Mm. Aaron, what's General Hux doing these days in Last Jedi? I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that I haven't really thought about him much since The Force Awakens. <laughs> um, I mean, it'd be interesting to see how he handles uh, the destruction of Starkiller Base. I don't even know if he's going to remain in power. Um, but yeah, cause that, that was kind of his baby. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he had, he had the whole Hitler speech before it fired, getting everybody pumped up. And then like two minutes later it breaks. And <laughs> so, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see how, cause you know, the last time something like that happened, uh, Tarkin was on board. So we didn't get to see how he handled that failure. So it'd be... Mm -hmm. Intriguing yeah. to see how Hux handles this, like how he explains it. Um, if he has to come muttering back to Snoke on groveling on hands and knees um, to kind of explain it, or if it would turn a different route. I don't know. Um, it'd be also interesting yeah. if he sets up any kind of rivalry with someone else in the Resistance. Well, I really liked... Him and Kylo going at it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Yeah, that's perfect Imperial they're First like, they're Order. Like step brothers almost. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. Well, and they're they're both vying. You know, they're they're trying to get attention of uh, of Snoke. You know, like Snoke's the yeah. dad. Like, hey. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love this. I would love to see that too. Uh, Heather, what do you think about Hux? Yeah, he. When I was remembering him similar to Aaron. I was like, you know, which one is that guy again? Um, <laughs> yeah. But I remembered him being like, Oh yeah, he's like 
the CEO of a company who's like on their last rope, ready to like snap at any moment. That's how right. I remembered him where yeah. he's got like the president breathing down his neck and the whole company is like on him. And then there's this like new kid coming in and like kind of holding him accountable. And he's like, he's got this exterior, but I think he's, I think he's going to snap. But what's he going to do oh. when he snaps? And that's my, right. that's my personal opinion. Um, okay. Just cause, okay, cool. Cause visually he also just looks up tight. So it's going to happen. Potentially, I don't know. Do you think he and Kylo are potentially going to sabotage each other? Because they're both on the same team. They both oh. kind of want the same thing, but I think in different mm-hmm. ways. Or they they also have mm-hmm. ulterior motives that may conflict. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. So that's a very interesting point because that we saw that in Rogue One, Tarkin to Krennic. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I was going to say, wait, they would sabotage, you know, something for greater gain. And that's straight up Imperial First Order, dude. Tarkin, learn from the best. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that would be interesting. That would be definitely interesting to see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for me, the biggest disappointment of The Force Awakens Captain Phasma, what is Gr- <laughs> Gwendolyn Christie doing in The Last Jedi? Well, after she wa- washes off her armor, polishes it up from the from the garbage disposal. Um, yes, I'm thinking like there's a start of a rivalry between her and Finn in The Force Awakens. Yeah. Because she's yes. the one who yeah. basically almost rats him out um, for not being a loyalist to to the for- First Order. And yeah. it'd be interesting to see how that develops. Yeah. Very I go cool. back to my previous statement. I'm curious <laughs> if she'll have part of feeding into his mental state of Finn. If she'll try and like get even, if you will. Yeah, I mean, again, she, Gwendolyn is like a major, amazing actress. And I just don't understand, you know, like, are they going to develop that more, her role, you know, because she is a female, a very strong female lead in, you know, a guy's environment. So Mm -hmm. is she going to do something, you know, are we going to see some of that? Or is it just like, you know... Is she trying to take over? She sees Huck slipping. Does she try to take that over? I don't know. You know, it'd be interesting what kind of dynamic she will bring to the table. So interesting. Do you think she'll Gosh. have? A, do you think there would be like a female against female interaction? Is this hmm. where Princess Leia goes up against, well, and it's like a no, female think, female thing? Yeah, I don't think Princess Leia is gonna get into any action per se like sure captain phasma is like she's a soldier first and foremost but i feel like that's a valid point yeah i i don't know um i i definitely think she holds her own against men in general and uh (laughs) i don't know if it i don't know if we're gonna get like the classic female versus female fight Mm -hmm. or something i i just feel like she is definitely want to sink her teeth in and, and get more elevated in the ranks in the first order, I think. So, cause she's kind of like, you know, again, in the force Awakens, she's kind of like the personal troop for Kylo Ren. So does she support Kylo Ren or does she ditch Kylo Ren and Hawks and try to make her own, you know, in, in the last Jedi? I don't know. Hmm. All right. So next up we have the three newbies. So Rose, what is Rose's story? Heather, what do you think about what, what's going on with Rose? Um, I'm excited to see her sort of, I, I think I'm excited to see her be this young girl in the midst of it, kind of a mechanic who mm-hmm. is just doing what she needs to, not kind of a mechanic, she is a mechanic. <laughs> right. <laughs> She's Sorry. faking it. She's you know, faking I'll it. Just pretend. Yeah. Just like um, fixing so ships get... with one hand and playing paddle ball with the other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, will will Princess Leia 
have a mothering response will, you know, will Poe, you know, step in and see something in her. I don't know what that looks like. Um, but I'm, I am excited for another female character. Um, and, um, but when I first was reading about her, um, she reminded me a lot of Kaylee um, in Firefly. Um, oh. Where she's, you know, a ship mechanic. Yeah. As tr- out, out of trade, but she holds a lot more weight than I think we realize. Um, That's a great analogy. I love so it. So I'm, I'm excited to see how that plays out. Like, how pivotable. Pivotable? That's not a word. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pivotal. Um, pivotal. P- pivotal. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see where that plays out for her. But that's the that was my instant correlation when I read about her. Cool. Aaron, Rose, what do you think? I don't know a dang old thing about her, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Open expectations. <laughs> Hope she's cool. I can't I can't know. I, I mean, can't know. I mean the character yeah. roster for this movie is insane. I hope she's mm-hmm. just yes, not like a filler well, character. But geez, how many yeah. character threads can we keep track of, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, this is a lot. We're we're almost there, guys. Know. We're almost there. We're almost done. Yeah, I I think we see her a, a complete hero journey for Rose. Like she is, you know, doing her job in the resistance, and she gets to meet these famous people, pretty much. You know, like mm-hmm. almost a background character thrown into. Uh, and I I think obviously based on what we've seen just a little bit. Uh, I think Finn and Rose go on a little adventure to uh, find that mole and the resistance. That's that's my that's my dig. Are they going to fall in love? Oh! <laughs> and then and then Poe's like, no, we had a bromance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so then the next new character is Vice Admiral Holdo. And that's played by Laura Dern. So she is in the resistance. Uh, I, man, I forgot she was in this th- movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> that's a pleasant surprise. I, I like her. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Heather, what do you think about yeah. Vice Admiral Holdo? Um, yeah. So um, I don't know a whole lot about her since yeah. <laughs> she's brand new. No, nor, nor do we. Nor does, right. <laughs> Um, yeah. You know, so you try and do as much, you know, Wikipedia as possible to kind of <laughs> get a little bit of background enough to kind of form an opinion. Um, a, visually, she's amazing um, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. the purple hair and the killer outfit. So from <laughs> if, I, if I can be girly for but a moment. Um, you can. Go ahead. Yeah. That makes me really excited um, only because that just opens up the other component of the last Jedi that I'm excited about is just the overall visualization of the worlds ah. that are created, which we can talk about yeah. later. Um, but so, yeah, so I'll be intrigued to kind of see what her role is. Um, there's so much about, as Aaron put it, the C-SPAN of the galaxy that I don't totally fully wrap my brain around and <laughs> what perspective she'll bring to that. Right. I, uh, you know, Cool. What interactions she'll have with people? Is her purple hair an indicator of her being kind of a free spirit? I don't know. Like, mm, very you know, good. Yeah. Is she the the hippie of the group? Let's not fight. <laughs> Let's you know, peace and love. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Aaron, what do you think about Vice Admiral Holdo? Once again, I don't know, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> Give me a nice, pleasant Just, surprise, and I'll be happy. Yeah. Uh, make it a throwaway character, and I'll be like, come on, man. Uh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's Laura Dern, uh, people. Right, yeah. I, I really think, honestly, she's butted heads with Leia. Really? Ooh. Mm. I, think, I think it's competition because, you know, the state of the Republic is in disarray. Resistance was kind of a splinter cell of, you know... The, the Republic, and I think she's trying to take reign over Leia. So I think I, I think Laura Dern's a fan, she's a fantastic actress, and again, I hope it's not like a Captain Phasma thing. Like, oh, she's a throwaway character. I really feel she's going to bring something to to the film. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay, last but not least, Benicio del Toro as 
DJ. DJ. <laughs> All right, that's I don't kind know of a if that's his name. real name. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know if that's his real name. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Aaron, what do you think? You got you got anything? You got any theories on DJ? Uh, I don't think he's going to be important at all. I think he's just kind of <laughs> kind of be like a cameo, just kind of show uh-huh. up and give some plot uh-huh. information and then vanish into the night. <laughs> awesome. There you go. <laughs> Heather, do you have any theories on DJ or? <laughs> um, I have nothing about the character, but from what I know of the actor, he definitely has a presence about him. So yes. whether yeah. that presence is a cameo presence, like Aaron is talking about, or he if he has a legit like character, yeah, presence, I don't know. Yeah. But he's yeah. not an actor that's a throwaway actor, in my yeah. opinion. Well, I agree. my I agree. statement. Given enough money, <laughs> well, <laughs> all sorts of things like can to be, be accomplished. In Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay you to be in Star Wars. How do, how about that? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, I think he's our bounty hunter, man. I think he's in the gray. I think he mm. might work both sides. I would love to see him like like an arms dealer or something like that, where. The seedy He's underbelly of the resistance. Yes, yes. He really only I cares need... about himself, so whoever's the yes. highest yeah. highest amount is I... the side he goes to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of... I I see him in Canto Bite. I see him in the, you know, in the, in the, the gambling mm-hmm. kind of realm. So I think Finn and, Finn and Rose meet up with DJ somewhere along the way. I don't know. I just feel like him kind of... Kind of playing both sides. So, right. yeah. So there you go. That's all the characters. <laughs> There's a lot of characters, Ooh. and we haven't even, we haven't even, like, you know, talked about anything else. <laughs> Man, they should, <laughs> no, they should sell that's... a Star Wars yearbook. <laughs> that would be really cool. <laughs> that would be awesome. You know, that would be awesome. So, um, kind of pose the question what is the one thing you're looking forward to in The Last Jedi? So I got a couple comments, and I just want to read uh, from our listeners. Ooh. Uh, yes. So uh, Mike said, more Luke Skywalker, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mike. Adam said, just another trip back to Galaxy Far, Far Away. So I think what he meant there is like, I just want to go back. So take me there, you know? <laughs> sure. Take me away. Uh, take me away. Uh, Richard said... A revelation about Ray's ancestry. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. I don't know if we're gonna see that though. Man, yeah. want to know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm with and, you, and Richard. Then, I want to uh, know. <laughs> I want to know. Uh, and then this one's funny. I had to say it. So Stephen said, "I hope Lone Star and Barf can stop Dark Helmet again." <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, that's Those awesome. are a couple quick ones. Yeah, that's oh, a couple. Oh, so good. Uh, yeah, and then uh, one more. Christopher uh, said, but I'm thinking Luke turns evil. Evil! Ooh, that's a big evil. statement. Yeah, that's, that's big, man. Oof. That's a big, yeah, yeah. So that, that those are all people from my Blue Squadron group at work. So shout out to them, man. So... Yeah, so, all right, let's pose the question to each one. So, Aaron, what is the one thing you're looking forward to in The Last Jedi that maybe we haven't covered through our little character analysis? Crystal Foxes. (laughs) Yes! The Crystal Fox. Yes. The, you know. Our Verloop. I know know you two have a special place in your heart for the Porgs. But yeah, of all yeah. the new new animals, aliens introduced uh, yes. in the, in the material so far, those crystal yes. foxes are so cool. I, I, They're so cool. <laughs> well, so I would like I'd like to say though I didn't see the crystal foxes until I took a bullet and watched the final trailer. <laughs> so <laughs> so I you're saying it was worth first. it first? It was totally mm. worth it. Yes. <laughs> right, yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heather, what what's the yes. one thing that we you know you're looking forward to in the last Jedi that maybe we haven't covered so far? 
for sure. Um, I mean, obviously, crystal foxes, um, porgs, because they're fantastic. But the big thing, I'm, <laughs> I, um, the big thing that I'm intrigued to see is um, Chewy. Um, oh, his his partner's gone. Um, where does he fit? What? Is he gonna? Is he staying with Ray? What does that look like? How does that play out? Is he hurt? Is he wounded? Does he need a hug? You know. Um, mm. Yeah. So yeah. where where is Chewie gonna fit in all of this? Because he's obviously um, a huge part of all of our lives. Um, yes. And yeah. then. Well, and, and, and then we've R2. always seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, and R two, of course, R2. the droids, obviously. <laughs> I that's knew you were going to bring it up. I'm I was hoping sorry. you were going to bring it up. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, kind of, yeah, kind of the idea of the whole, the supporting people that make our main characters so wonderful. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Of course. I'm done. I'll course. keep talking. Keep you someone else. <laughs> <our talk. laughs> I'll keep on saying things. Quick. What's that over there? In R2. Yeah. <laughs> BB, what? What about BB-8? Oh, I love him. Um, I this one's an easy one. John Williams. I just can't wait to hear some yes. of that. Please one. cook up my some favorite. good old themes he, for us, Johnny boy. Yeah, he's my favorite composer. I just love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. And um I can't wait to hear some new music. So So yeah, there you go. So right. that that was kind of our spoiler free last Jedi. <laughs> Um, synopsis, Woo! I guess, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to news of the week. This just in. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, all right. So here we go. Uh, first up, it's been five years since Walt Disney bought Lucasfilm for the cool $4.1 billion. Five and years? Obviously, five years. So Disney took over 2012, and the studio has basically released two new Star Wars films, which have grossed $3 billion. So they almost so, like made it all back. Right, and that that's totally uh, that totally doesn't include merch or anything else. Whoa. <laughs> So they it's, certainly made it back. Straight up, yeah, they're, they're alone. straight up. Uh, yeah, right, right. I mean, that is straight up, um, basically, you know, just ticket sales. So I think they're doing pretty good. So, uh, yeah. Do you think how how is the last Jedi going to do in the box office? Good, bad, but probably okay. Um, a, a meager <laughs> billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one point five maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one point five bill. Okay, that'd be okay. that'd be ambitious. But if any film can well, do it I right mean, now, I think it can. Yeah, people are in the giving yeah. mood, Rogue, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're right. gonna want to see it Rogue with family. One, and multiple times, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know. Yeah. So Rogue One made a, a billion. Uh, Force Awakens made two billion. So you know. 1.5 oh, seems I'm, right in the middle. I'm low shotting it then. <laughs> okay, well, 2.2 2 bill. That's my that's my I guess. I was gonna say oh, it's gonna beat the Force Awakens. Okay. I All think right. it's going to, and I think it's only because it's the fans' chance to say goodbye to Carrie Fisher as well. Ooh, mm. good angle. And so I wonder, right? So I wonder yeah. if there's you know some heartstrings that are gonna help with yeah. that as well yeah interesting that's very interesting i like it i like it all right uh number two on the list uh so over the weekend on saturday the la premiere uh for the last jedi took place and john boyega was in atlanta well atlanta (laughs) got uh like you know a foot of snow and he was stuck (laughs) jeez (laughs) <laughs> he was stuck in Atlanta, so he's supposed to fly out early Saturday morning to get to L.A., you know, because that's what Hollywood actors do, you know. And um, so his tweets became a little frantic, and one of them was the best. He's like, uh, his third tweet was, 
trying to get back to L.A. premiere. I actually need a pilot. Nice. <laughs> so um, he did end up making it, but basically he was stuck and no pla- all the planes were canceled out of Atlanta. But somehow through the force, John Boyega made it to L.A. Mm, so. Private pilot, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's like I get. I'll get you there. It was. Wouldn't it, it was, be cool if Harrison Ford Oscar. flew him in? <laughs> hey, hey kid, hey kid, I can do it. <laughs> so Atlanta's like buried in a foot of snow. Meanwhile, California's on fire. <laughs> right, right. I know it's like two extremes. We got all the forest fires in LA, you know, in, in California. Going from Hoth to Mustafar. Atlanta. Right. <laughs> And back again. <laughs> man, oh, man. Oh, man. So uh, I'm just, these, this is a non-spoiler Twitter reaction. So I'm, I, I pulled nothing spoiler. So this is straight up right from the L.A. premiere because uh, as of today, on Tuesday, the 12th, uh, the critics were able to start, you know, commenting and the, the ban was lifted as far as spoilers are concerned. But this is straight up from Saturday. Here are three Twitter reactions. Okay, here we go. The Last Jedi is incredible. Character at the for- character at the forefront, amazing action, and so much emotional payoff. Decades in the making. Whoa. I be watching this one a lot. That's a that's a that's, that's high praise. Yes. Yeah. Star Star Wars hashtag The Last Jedi is bonkers. I honestly don't have any words. It's jam-packed and full of surprises. Avoid spoilers at all costs. Well, so even <laughs> in that review, he's that person's like, don't, don't, don't. Just don't do it. Pay attention. Just, just don't do it. Um, next okay. one. I am stunned by Star Wars The Last Jedi. I gasped. I laughed. I screamed. I cried. Whoa. And I had a time of my life. <laughs> at a time of my life, Ryan Johnson pulled it off, making what might be the best Star Wars movie ever. End quote. You heard it here first, folks. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, did you, uh, by chance, did you p- pick up any negative tweets? No, I, 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 I didn't. You, I, well, I didn't want to look too, you know, the other thing is like, I didn't really oh, want yeah. to look too much because. Didn't want to plumb the depths of Spoiler Town. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I didn't want to go too deep in the Twitterverse. Um, I just pulled a couple of those off. So I was like, okay, okay, mm-hmm. cool. I, I see what's going on. Yeah. I haven't heard anything um, negative, but again, we didn't really hear anything negative about the Phantom Menace. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, too soon. I, hate, uh, I know. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Um, moving right along. Kelly Marie Tran, that is going to be Rose, they had an article in the Rolling Stone, and she basically said the following. Uh, now she's trying to convince herself that no one recognized her on the street, even after the movie's December 15th release. She said, I feel totally Hannah Montana, she says in her interview. Um, like I have, a, have that life, and I also have a normal life. So she feels like she's going to be, you know kind of two different roles because this is really her first like major mm-hmm. very similar to daisy ridley this is like her f- first major i was about to say um, like we've seen this before film. yeah right. now did you guys see any of the red carpet stuff nope i've been on nope. social media lockdown when it comes to Star Wars. <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> that's, that's okay that's fair that's fair uh a I good friend uh screenshots i didn't see it i saw screenshots well, they they kind of do like this red carpet thing and blah blah blah, and uh, she's kind of uh, Kelly Marie Tran is like mm-hmm. coming off this like riser, and Daisy Ridley's right there, and she just breaks down crying. She's like crying and just like she's like so emotionally like you know like taken aback by it. So mm-hmm. I think that's pretty cool. I think you know it's it was kind of cool seeing that you know like. This is like a big deal. <laughs> sure. And I don't know, you know, like for her perspective, I think it's just realizing like how, wow, this is like, this is the next level, you know? So, mm-hmm. so yeah. Sure. Uh, I mean, and then, f- yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was saying, um, so I follow like Disney and, and Disney studios and Star Wars and stuff on my Instagram account. And of course. I guess, obviously, um, and I guess she'd like, you know, how you take over someone's, you know, Instagram for a day when you're in the celebrity world. And I guess she took over for Disney 
out for a day or something. And she's super okay. adorable, like in real <laughs> life. Yeah. Um, but she's definitely really young. And so oh, right, I, yeah. I totally feel like that's potentially where she's at. And I don't know if she knows what's coming. And now, the Star Wars right. news yeah, totally of the week. Because if, depending on what her character is, and after we all see The Last Jedi, if she gets thrust into more of Hollywood, maybe she won't yeah. be Hannah Montana anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's true. And then uh, finally, there's a lot of rumors building on this, and it looks like it might actually happen. Disney buying 20th Century Fox. What? That's yeah. insanity. <laughs> so <laughs> they're just gobbling everything up. Be like Marvel, yes. Star Wars, yes. 20th Century Fox, <laughs> throw it in the cart. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> throw it in the cart. Right. I'll put I'll put that in the cart. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not the news portion. So you know, Fox News and all that stuff will stay the same. But it's mm-hmm. all. The movie properties. So you got Titanic, you got Predator, you got oh, Die Hard, you got Rocky, you got all the, you know, Avatar, you got all these hope. like. Yes. Did they that, did they ever get the dude. distribution rights back from them? No. Well, no, no, they no, no, no. Yeah. Could yeah. this mean a original cut An Blu-ray? Action- Yes, <laughs> yes. Or just a 4K release of A New Hope. Please, please, <laughs> please. Yeah. So there you go. Our, our news of the week. Uh, so obviously, um, I don't even think we need to do can- Cantina Chat because, um, yeah, we're, we're going to be it's seeing a, Star Wars. It's a long-ass episode. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I, I, th- I think we're all gonna be uh, seeing Star Wars. So this is true. This is true. So you're, you're Aaron. You're seeing it Thursday. I'm seeing it Thursday, and then Heather, you're seeing it Sunday. You got it. Awesome. That's awesome. I, I'm gonna see it Sunday as well. So I'm gonna see it twice. Twice. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> what I mean, you gonna on. forget it's... it? <laughs> no, no. I want to see it again, man. You know. I'm just giving you grief. So, yeah. I know, I know. Are you going to try to see it seven times or eight times? Oh, man, that's a big ask. I tried to do that with The Force Awakens, and I got to the theater six times. So Ooh. if I can, I, it's a goal. I, I'm, it's a goal I'm willing to try again. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So we're, we're, we're getting inching very closely to to it. I can't wait. So I, I maybe I'll try. I don't know. It's something to shoot for, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We all should all right. have goals, Todd. We should all have goals. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Heather, again, yes. I want to thank you for joining us on our little journey through our last Jedi predictions. Thank Thanks you, for being Heather. Anytime, anytime. It's always a joy to chat with you guys. It's basically right. like Christmas morning every time I talk. To you. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, Because you guys are just, you're, well, it's more the, the like seven year old reactions to everything that's going on that makes it <laughs> the best. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Thank you for joining it's us. Fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, thanks again for listening to another episode of WSDR Podcast. Once again, check us out on the social media, WSDR Media, all one word, all over case. We want to hear from you. So comment, tweet, rate us on iTunes, email us at WSDRpodcast at gmail.com. We also have a voicemail option. You can leave us a voicemail. Uh, 630-557-WSTR. That's 630-557-9787. You can leave us uh, leave us some dope reactions of your last Jedi experience. Please so, do. Uh, and then, please do. Yeah, and we can play <laughs> it up on an upcoming podcast episode. So now you know all the ways to get a hold of us. And I guess next week we'll be talking about last Jedi. I don't know. What do you think, Aaron? I think we should talk about KFC. <laughs> of course we're gonna talk about the last jedi we're probably gonna go on for like three hours about it <laughs> dude uh, we, i can't we, wait we, we, yeah i can't wait i can't wait so um yeah so uh next week we'll we'll begin to uh kind of 
peel the onion back and, and maybe the multiple layers that we'll see in uh, The Last Jedi. So, now, this is... Podcasting! Go see Last Jedi. Go see Last Jedi. Go see it. Go. No spoilers on social media. No, no spoilers. No, no ports. Spo- no yeah. nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> and stop. And stop.